One other aspect in networks and graphs that is significant is the idea of an adjacency matrix. And that is this. If we have a graph and A can go to B on two different routes, B is linked to C, and C, there's a loop uh, uh, from how many ways are there from, of going, say, from A to A? Well, there is no way of going from A to A straight away. There's no loop going from A to A, so there are zero ways of going from A to A. How many ways are there of going from A to B? We can go along E1 or we can go along E2. They're only named here for reference. They'd be rarely named, but just for me to be able to refer to them, I've given them names. So there are two different routes that we can go from, B, from A to B, the north route and the south route. Other way from A to C, there are no routes leading from A to C directly, so that's a big zero. What about B? Well, B, you can go the north road or the south road to A. There are two ways of going to A. From B to B, there are no loops, so that's a zero. Uh, from B to C, uh, there's just one way. And now what about C? C goes to A. No, it doesn't. There are no routes there, so that's a zero. Uh, there is, uh, from C to B, there's one road, one. And from C to C, there's a single loop, one. Now, just to say that that last entry is controversial, because some people say that going from C to C, there are two ways, going clockwise and anti-clockwise, and they put in the number two. Uh, most mathematicians in the world say it's one, um, but there is not universal agreement on this. In the book, we did one, because it makes more sense. How many ways are there of going from C to C? One way, going around that loop. Uh, uh, we think it, it, that is the correct decision, and that is what most mathematicians around, around the world it is very important that when you read a matrix, it reads from left to top. What do you mean? For example, in this, uh, from B to A is two. That, it, it, that is represented there. You start on the left, B, from B to A is two. It goes from left to top. I always remember lawn tennis, LT. Um, uh, and if you remember lawn tennis, LT, it starts on the left and goes to the top. That becomes in particularly important when there are directed graphs where they aren't two-way streets. Now, find m squared. That is a matrix that represents the number of uh, path, uh, what number of uh, arcs that lead from A to B to C, B, B to all the others, and so on. If we get m squared, which is we multiply m by m, now, the method of multiplication has to be taught here because it's no longer on the maths course. It is what we call a diving board system. We go, I call it the diving board. You run along the diving board and then splash. You look at that row and that row. You multiply the first by the first, the second by the second, and the third by the third. Zero and four and two gives you four. Then you take the same diving board and dive splish, splash. Zero by zero, two by zero, zero. One, zero by one is zero, total is zero. Then you do the next time, splish, splash, zero by zero is zero, two by one is two, two, um, is zero by one is, is zero, total two. And then you do the next diving board and you do the same. The answer is four, zero, two, zero, five, one, two, one, two. And you enter, you always enter them in that order, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. Um, now, Students, it says in the, in the syllabus, must be able to multiply a square matrix by a square matrix. If they get bigger, for example, four by four or five by five, or if they're higher powers, they will be allowed to use uh, the, uh, an, an internet uh, matrix multiplier. And there are lots of such. Matrix Calc is the one I use, M-A-T-R-I-X-C-A-L-C uh, dot org. I use that one, and it's got a very nice adjacency matrix multiply. Now, what does this signify? Well, this is n to the power of 2. And this tells you the numbers, number of ways of getting from A, say, to A in two steps, a walk of two steps. So there are four different walks of two steps because it's n to the power of 2. There are four. How, how about from A to B? There are none. How, many, how about from A to C? There are two walks 
of length two that go from A to C. Notice we go from left to top. What about B? B to A, there are no, uh, no walks of length two. From B to B, there are five walks of length two that will bring you from B back to B and so on. If you do M cubed, you get 0, 10, 2, 10, 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, but by multiplying M squared by M, by the diving board method. And the question is, state the largest entry in M cubed and see what it signifies. Well, the largest entry is 10. If we take that entry there as 10, that goes from, it's on the top row from A to B, going from the left to the top, from A to B. That means there are 10 walks of length three, because this is m to the power of three. There are 10 walks of length three from A to B, and obviously from B to A. That is what that signifies. There are 10 walks of length three from A to B or B to A. Uh, that is very important. Uh, here's another example. Um, given this adjacency matrix, I'll just focus in this and bring this a little bit closer so you can see it a little bit better. Um, I'm going to focus. Uh, 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 draw the corresponding graph. Okay. Well, we put A and B and C and D in a nice square, and A to B, there's no road from A to A. There's no loop from A to A. From A to B, there's one road. From A to C, there are none, and from A to D, there has to be one. From B to A, there's one. We've done it already. From B to B, there's none. From C, uh, from B to C, there's one, so we must join B to C. And from B to D, there's one. So B must be linked to D. Now, C, there are no links to A. That's correct. From B, there's one. That's already there. To C, there is one. Ah, there's your loop uh, from C to C. And from C to D, there is one. Oh, so we must put that in. Now, from D to A, there's one already there. From D to B, there's one. From D to C, there's one, and there is no loop from D to D. That is the corresponding graph. Use a matrix calculator. I simply put these in those entries, 0, 1, 0, 1, and so on, onto a matrix calculator, pressed uh, M to the power of 4. It does it all very quickly. Matrixcalc.org is, I think, is the most nifty little one. It does it beautifully and very clearly and lays it out. And then the question says, Explain the uh, significance of the largest entry in the matrix. Well, the highest entry here is 21. There it is. And that means, because it's m to the power of 4, that there are 21 walks of length 4 from C to C. And you can go from C to C uh, in 21. I'll give you one example. Here's one from C to D to A to B to C. That's 1, 2, 3, 4. That's one. Here's another one. C to D to B to C to C. That's another one going from C to C. And as I said, the only uh, unusual thing is here is, is a loop one or is a loop two? We call it one. And that is uh, the adjacency matrices of um, graphs covered and uh, knowing how to uh, multiply them either using a calculator or using, for small ones, the students will be expected to be able to multiply one square matrix by another. That's covered. Thank you very much.